Yeah, we're we'll back to career build series. This is episode 158, and so um, tr pretty much right where we left off. I let Triton get all the way up to uh, the end point, which was up around Spy Cakes. Um, stopped fine. You know, I had some issues before where it wasn't auto stopping. Uh, it seems to be working fine now. So let's go ahead and let's dock, and then make a couple quick changes on Triton and on uh, the Did. So let's go ahead and do that. So. Start, uh, I need to shut the autopilot off. Is the autopilot off? Okay, why do I not have rudder? That's the question. Let's see what's up with rudder. There we go, I have rudder control. Now, I forgot that I put the rudder on much slower now, so we have much slower rudder control. All right, so let's go ahead and dock. Um, you know, kind of recap last time was uh, when I cleaned quote unquote cleaned up the microcontrollers for the antenna that reports Triton's pad position. I ended up deleting um, both the frequency and the transmit. So I need to go and um, redo those so that I have that. Uh, that's why Katie did, could not track to Triton was Triton was not actually reporting anything off its antenna. So need to fix that. And then uh, need to put in a couple things on Triton. So we'll make it a little bit of a build video. I don't want to do too much building, but... Um, so I also, I need to, I'm noticing now, I need to fix the rudder. So I kind of did a simplistic rudder control in the beginning. I need to change it. It's currently not working for me. And so what's happening is the, the rudder is limited to 45 degrees. If you put it more than 45 degrees it will start to stall. I'm using wing sections on pivots and so um, the wing will actually start to, the rudders will start to stall if they go over 45 degrees. So uh, what I have hooked up right now is just A and D and the issue is uh, A and D still wants to go all the way to 1 so it makes it slow coming back so I have to fix that. All right, so I'm going to should be able to pull Katie did off. Katie did just, uh, I'm just going to jump here. Oh no, don't break the ankle. Um, just going to jump on Katie here and um, take off, put it off to the side here. I need to repair Katie, but it's just just the um, low battery. I bet I'm on low battery now. Yeah, I'm on low battery because I didn't, uh, see if I can get an engine start. I left the power on, so you see we have a low battery warning, so I'm going to check the, uh, uh, we're low on battery. Hoping it, hoping it uh, revs up enough that it doesn't want to stay running because the battery's so low. Eh, it's a little ugly. Um, see, okay, so this tells me another thing I need on Triton. So that's actually kind of good. So where is the um, helipad? I need uh, ground power. This could be fixed in two seconds if I had a ground power outlet, uh, which I don't have. So I'm trying to, I don't have any way to force this to stay up. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Trying to think, trying to think. Let me see if I can go master power off. Engine might be able to get enough. No, it's not going to run. All right, so let me uh, figure something out here. So let me see if I can just recall it. Um, actually, you know what I can do? Let me do this. I'm going to do something real quick here. Uh, I just need a little bit of power for Katie here. Uh, just make something really quick. All right. All right, so when in doubt, we'll engineer a solution here to the problem. So kind of nice to have these little emergent gameplay moments where we figure when we find out we have a problem and so solve them. Right, so I'm going to make a really quick uh, portable battery here and this will 
Fix me up. All right. All right, so this should fix me up. I just need enough battery. Oh, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? I have an emergency battery. <laughs> uh, there's a, that's a whole reason I have an emergency battery for this. My mind is uh, it's having problems at the moment. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, so, I have an emergency battery. So all I have to do is flip this, and we're good. Theoretically. Oh, I wonder if it's because the rotors are folded. I don't know. I almost never fold the rotors, so... Oh, come on. Get up there. Dopey. Yeah, I forgot I have... Uh... Oh, there we go. That's what it was. It was the rotors are folded. Okay, I'm a dummy. I never fold the rotors. So, uh... But I also have the uh, emergency battery there, too. So I got hurt here. Getting hit by the, uh, by the prop. So we're good. Um, that was just me. Alright, so detach the coupling. I want oh, autopilot on before I hit something. Now let's just move this. Getting a little bit of slowdown. I don't know why, but I am on slowdown at the moment. So Let's actually go ahead. I'm going to bring this all the way to Draymore. I need to... Instead of me running off some uh, torches, I might bring out another vehicle anyway. Um, I'll show you my uh, chopper to get back. I made a little chopper sidecar just to kind of, you know, be another vehicle to go back and forth from uh, base to base on land. So I should probably put a torch in Katie. I'd love to find a spot that I like to put it in there be helpful to have a repair torch. We end up doing some repair torch missions and I end up having to go and get one and bring one. Alright, so again, that's another reason why I have that emergency battery flip switch. Uh, that wasn't the problem, but it was uh, reminding me that I just never fold the rotor, so I didn't even think about it. Alright, so let's land here and drain more. Alright, let's call that in. That's good. Uh, let me grab the chopper. Get in the chopper. All right, so my little uh, sidecar chopper here. So just kind of a little fun little vehicle to screw around with, holds one person like to make a regular proper motorcycle, but I need to figure out some sort of balancing system so that uh, it works properly. There's a potential to XML edit some wheels, and I don't know if I can get them small enough so they are invisible to kind of make training wheels, but um, some people do it with like a pivot and a, uh, and a weight block. I was testing with that. I got reasonable results. I just couldn't get it very compact, so... You know, one of the issues is you need a microcontroller still, and, you know, one of the reasons I like the sidecar is the floor of the sidecar is actually the microcontroller, and it's a reasonably large microcontroller because I have a bunch of gears on here, so. Um, whoa, 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 there we go. Slip and slide. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's because the wheel's on a pivot. It uh, didn't like spinning out there. All right, uh, I'll be a little bit more careful here. I, I have yet to put a... So I need to PID control the steering, so the steering is not as sensitive when you get up to high speed. I have that on a bunch of my builds where it just it... Um, essentially dampens the steering as you uh, increase in speed. You need to use a PID or a function. I'll have to determine at a later date what I want to do uh, with that. But So I want to put also put a little... Uh, oh, crap. Put a rope anchor on this so that I can lift it into the um, hangar of uh, Triton. Yeah, see, so what's happening here and why it's causing this problem is, see the pivots glitching into the front of the motor? And once it reaches a certain amount, that's when you get that physics. People actually will use this type of glitch to their advantage where they... Um, where that's how they do some of the, their stability systems for like motorcycles is when it glitches it puts a force off to the side and so they get right on that edge and it allows them to do that so um, 
We just do a quick pick in case we need one. All right, and so uh, let's go ahead and call uh, Triton into the workbench. Now let's do a couple of these things I need to do to fix Triton up. Uh, too many in the zone. Uh, because Remora is on there too. So let me see if I can back this out if I can pull it with Remora on there. Remora is on there, so. Yeah, see, it's doing this crap. Oh, come on. Behave yourself. I have reverse. I can't remember what key I made it. Two. Okay. So, like, a Ural sidecar will actually have a, um, will actually have a reverse. Uh, gold wings have a reverse. My gold wing does not have a reverse, unfortunately. So there's many times I wish I did have reverse with my gold wing. Uh, so let me see if I can't recall this. It might have issues with the remora being on the side. Uh, that I can't. Yep, yeah, remora. All right, let's, uh, move remora. Remora, what I'll do, too, is, uh, we'll just kind of commit to this being a build video. And I will, um, I'll go ahead and I'll work on Remora's system there. So that's probably enough. Let's go ahead and just, I'm just going to, no clip to get down there. Um, I'm going to build this stuff in my um, test world anyways. I just want to get everything out of there. And so once Remora's out of the way here, we can recall everything. So Remora's going to get that new system to uh, find Triton. That will, you know, like we had a perfect opportunity there that if it was foggy, but the uh, wind wasn't too high to go do rescues with Remora. But, um, you know, it'd have no f way to find Triton in the fog. So, again, it's worthwhile doing that. Okay, let's, uh, okay, let me see. Do I disconnect there? I forget how I had this set up. Ah. Uh, Screwed up my battery on this too, but again, backup battery is your friend. So I would have been screwed if I didn't uh, have a backup battery in there. That's why that's why I kind of came up with that system again. Something learned from doing career is you know you uh, forget to shut off your systems and you burn up your battery. So we're gonna behave ourselves this time. Shut off our systems. I'm just going to do a bunch of uh, no clipping around just because I don't want this to take forever getting set up. There we go. Okay, so Triton, let me save. Triton hasn't changed, but I'm going to save it over here. And then uh, let's see if I can't pull Remora. Remora needs some work too. And we'll go in the test world. That way it's just easier for me. Um, Yeah, so that, that system of having a backup battery is really a good way to do things. Is just makes it so that, you know, like I just left two, two craft on, you know, in, in so many minutes. And, you know, it made it super easy for me to, to give them power. Portable battery system would be nice, too. Um, all right, so we're, we're all, everything's put away except the chopper. Let's go ahead and save this. And I'll open up my um, test seed and do a little bit of work here. Um, if we have time, I might shoot over to home base and put a GPS with a transmitter on home base. And then we can also home to home base. So, you know, of course we can use the map, but it's kind of cool to be able to do it all by radio. Now let's start with Triton. We'll start with the big doggy first. All right, so looking at my list here, what I want to do. Um, so I want to fix this mast for uh, the uh, antenna first. So one thing they did in this last uh, this last patch, which was uh, September 23rd, 22, was you used to have these arrows, and they were animated. And so for every line, they animated. And so that was a huge slowdown in the editor. That makes it much quicker. Like, I can zoom around even with all this logic. So that was a big improvement that they made. All right, so you see none of this is connected. Um, I need to fix all that. Crap, did I move a microcontroller that I needed? Let's check here. Um, so bearing 2, bearing 2, basic panel. That's a tutorial. That is receiver. 
homing radio transmitter. Okay, so that's it. Um, let me, I shouldn't have done it this way. Let me do it this way. Bring Triton in, and then I'll grab it. And uh, I don't know where the microcontroller is, so I may have deleted the microcontroller. So I want to find it, so this will hopefully make it a little bit easier to find. All right. Oh, just put it on side there so I can see it. All right, so I'm looking for, see if I have this panel. So what is it? It's about a 2x4, two 2x4. By four, two by four. Trying to see if I have one. I don't want to have to have a second one sitting in there. I'll probably end up using it for something else as well, but, um, you know, another antenna, but... Okay, so it looks like I completely deleted out the whole panel, which is fine. Now I can use this one. So, uh, GPS X and Y. So, this is going to go from the um, GPS X and Y are going to come from here. Uh, it's distance sensor. Where is my GPS? It should be under here. What happened to my GPS? Wow, I have no GPS there anymore. Hmm. That is super strange, man. Okay, completely deleted the GPS out of there. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm trying to think how to get it precisely where it needs to be. Um, so it needs to come up for two, okay. At some point I need to make sure I have this line perfectly so that um, things will operate well with it and then slide forward two, one, two, so that's funny too, I completely deleted that somehow. No wonder systems weren't working. I wonder if I accidentally grabbed a save that wasn't completed. Uh, so this should go to sensors. I'm gonna just bring it right to sensors here. I need to find electrical. Uh, ballast, lights. I'll find sensors and drag it up there, It'll be quicker. A thruster, th diesel, diesel. Okay, that is rudders, cooling, cooling, thruster, bridge, ballast, nav lights, trim tabs, engineering, generator, nav lights, ballast, bridge, firefighting, port marine gen. Maybe it's on um, non-essentials bus. I think it's on the non-essentials bus. Crane, sensors, right here, sensors. So I can go from sensors up to this um, GPS. All right, so that's plugged. Let's go ahead and grab uh, X coordinate. Let's plug that in here. So I just deleted the whole panel um, inadvertently, probably. X coordinate and Y coordinate. I had a, a big stress there What when I was working off screen uh, on Katie, I accidentally hooked up the GPS uh, and keypad, I transposed them, and I was pulling my hair out trying to figure that out. All right, so radio frequency needs to go, uh, it's gonna be this one here, and then I need transmit mode goes here. And let's get in here. All right, so uh, this is gonna have a static frequency, so what I'm gonna do here is this is gonna be constant number. And so this this antenna is always going to uh, be on the same front channel. So 80, uh, 6785, which is one I picked. Transmit mode. Um, see, I overcomplicated this. This is always going to be on transmit mode. I, you know, I kind of I'm going to use a bunch of antennas for decoration anyway, so I don't really need that. So let's get rid of. That's going to be a constant on. Like so. All right, what is this? Two radio. Okay, so this is the GPS coordinates. That's good. That's sending the GPS coordinates out to the um, antenna. And I'll leave that on in case I want to do some sort of control on it later. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and update that. And then I don't need that antenna anymore. This can go and be put away. So um, one more node I need here. Let me just paste it and connect the node before I forget and then have problems. So this uh, here, uh, that is reporting the coordinates. So that needs to be the send signal there. And that actually sends the GPS coordinates from 
the um, from that GPS um, transmitter on the uh, on the pad. All right, so let's just hide this in here. Plenty of good spots to hide stuff in here. It's nice having this close to the, uh, like I've said before, close to the bridge. Just so much easier to hide stuff on. Um, oh, don't do that. Oh, what did I do? That's frustrating. Oh, come on, man. That's frustrating. Hit the wrong button. Oh, where is it? Okay. Did I just completely screw it up? I did. Ugh, that's frustrating, man. Nope, there it is. I didn't lose it. Okay. I thought I lost it. I was going to say that was annoying. Got ahead of myself and uh, screwed, almost screwed up. Okay, so that's good. That should be all set. So when you check that off the list, always nice to check some things off of the list. So um, Pat Antenna has a frequency, and it is set to transmit. So that is now working. GPS, will, you know, I inadvertently deleted that. Uh, all right, so next, let's do ground power. So ground power is pretty simple. So this is going to be my... So right here, um, cable, and then I will, um, let's grab a cable, stick that in here. And then, so what this will let me do is plug electricity into whatever's on the pad. And that will um, allow me to power them up. So that blue is way too bright. All right, so that will allow me to power them up. And that way I can just plug into, in the you know, in the case of Katie did, Katie did, and give Katie did power. Uh, next thing I want to do is put in a, um, a refueling for Remora. And where's the center of Ramora? Right there. And I think what I'll do is just like that. Yeah, I'm not sure about the placement of that, but that's where it is for right now. It's just kind of a, you know, say it's kind of attached to the um, the pole there. Yeah, see, it looks like it's attached to the pole, so it doesn't look out of place. And then that you'll hook the, that hose there. What I need as well is, um, I haven't hooked any of this up yet, so this needs to be connected. Uh, okay, so that goes down. Let me see what this is here. All right, um, panel one is the diesel pump. So I haven't even configured the panel yet. What I think I'm going to do is I'll go back here, and I'm, I don't want to make two. I was going to make a second uh, control panel, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna make it so I have to walk up here and actually uh, grab the hose from up here. And I think what I want to do here is this as well. And I'm going to move this over one like so. All right, so what I'll have to do is I'll come up here and I'll actually use the button, which I have to configure. Uh, do button toggle one, and then these will all be nuns. Getting a little slow down in the editor, but it's not terrible. None. Okay, so that's good. Um, everything merged. Everything's merged. Let's grab white block here. Go there and okay, so that's set up. So I'll have to come up here and press this button. That will uh, start the fuel. Uh, okay, why is that not okay? There we go. Uh, and that will start the um, that will start the uh, fuel flow. The pump the pump will pump up both to this hose and anchor in this one, and then. Um, this will allow us to refuel uh, the remora. 
So again, I'm just doing some kind of decorating stuff how I want it. So there we go. That's better. I have a little curve there. I think it's more interesting. All right, so we'll have to go up and get the hose, but that's kind of better, I think, than having just random ones hanging around and having two panels, um, you know, uh, won't be refueling all that often. All right, so that is pretty good. Let me make check electricity on... This is powered. So what I need to do is just put power to this uh, cable anchor. Now we can power the um, ground power. So ground power is done, so that's good. That will uh, That gives us some good... Um, function. All right, so let's go ahead and save Triton. Trying to see if I have one down here so I don't have to save a million billions versions of it. Let's go back to Triton system work. I have backup saved on a portable hard drive too, so I don't have to worry about any of that. All right, so that's good. Um, refueling Remora is done. That's a uh, nice Okay, uh, so let's do this. Let's, um, I'm going to double check the save. Then I'm going to grab, I'm trying to think which has it, uh, 800 has it. So I'm going to grab the toolboxes off the 800. That's a 2 instead of 800. It's T800, and I just typed in 2 instead of all that. Yeah, much smoother in the uh, workbench now that, um, now that we don't have those, uh, animated lines. It was kind of cool, cool little visual thing, but, you know, certainly not worth the amount of um, slowdown we we're getting. All right. All right, and so this is all grabbed here. All right, and so let's go ahead and copy. Um, I need to find I, the microcontroller is built in. All right, so I thought it was. So copy that. Let's go ahead and grab Triton back. And I'm going to put a, at least one of these toolboxes in here um, down in engineering. And so that will give me a little bit of uh, some tools. Might do one for now. And I still have a nice walk path, so that's pretty good. That works there. That works well there. All right, merge. That to there, and that is good. Uh, let's check some logic here, um, or electricity rather. So, where do I want this electricity to go f to engineering? Uh, where we have trim tabs, cooling, stern thruster, port cooling, rudder. Where is engineering? Engineering, 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 right here. And that can go right uh, there. Make sure these are all connected. Yep. Okay, so that's all set. So uh, we now have tools. So that is good. Let's... Um, I thought I wrote it down. Did I not write it down? All right, so I guess I didn't write it down. But uh, add tool chest. There it is right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll save this again. And I want to grab the fuel water separators. Just a quick little decoration item. This is what's nice when you have a bunch of builds that have things that you might want is it makes decorating easier just because, you know, you can copy stuff. And you don't have to redo it eight times. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of do... Oh, what am I doing here? Um, yeah, let's do this by hand. So it's just simulated fuel water separator. So I just went online and looked at fuel water separators and kind of... I'm just going to use the wall to kind of see where I'm at here with um, where I need to pull that. Okay, so we're in a battery territory there. So right there should be the end of the fuel water separators. Okay. Copy that. And we'll go back to Triton. All right, so this is going to go up in this main uh, front section here, up, up against uh, these two walls. We'll do a set of fuel water separators for either engine. Um, kind of gives me, you know, flushes out the area a little bit more, too. You know, it makes it a little bit more interesting.
All right, and so that's set up. And then what are we at? We have we're at right at the end here. So, all right. So there's two fuel water separators in that uh, mostly just uh, give it a uh, you know a little more more decoration, make the room feel like it's actually doing something instead of just sitting there empty. And I want to grab. Oh, don't do this. I'm I'm like I'm rushing, so I'm hitting every one of the wrong buttons. And I'm gonna do something again that's gonna cost me more time than I'm saving by rushing. So, all right. So let's go. And I want to get um, hydraulic pump. So this is my hydraulic. Oh, get out of here! I'm doing it again. All right. So I need to slow down. Just trying to be quick here, and it's causing me problems. So I'm just going to grab the wall again so I can see everything. So that's it right there. All right, so that there is the um, my simulated hydraulic pump. Yeah, so this way it kind of gives me a little bit of separation between... Um, kind of the back engine room and then kind of like a forward engineering section where more things are kind of sticking. Can I put it here is where I want it? Um, it appears so. Okay, so that looks like that's good there. Yep, that could actually go back one. Let's cut it. And move it back one. Okay, there we go. All right, so this will go straight to the wall. This here will um, I think let's go to yeah, let's go have um, this one go up and these two go to the wall. All right. Oh, get out of there. I'm deleting stuff now too. I don't know why my hand is just not doing what I'm asking it to do. Should ask more nicely. Grab the pipe, thank you. I think part of it's I've got a little bit of slowdown in the editor here, and so it's um, I'm trying to move faster than it's moving, so I'm not really being all that precise because I'm moving slower than I am. All right, so there's my hydraulic system. So you would have. Um, you know, you simulate a hydraulic pump, and it's pumping through. This is the sump tank here. Hydraulic motor pump through. Just simulating hydraulic system. Um, again, decoration. Uh, it's kind of what makes a, a build come alive is a little bit of decoration. Especially a ship. Ships, you know, have so much crap going on inside them that you need kind of that decoration to... Um, make it feel alive. This is going to be a, an actual functional system is DEF. DEF is diesel exhaust fluid. This is a simulated compressor. That's coming too. So grab these. At some point I should actually pull them and uh, make them their own units so that I can just utilize them on other builds. All right. And so what I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to cut... Uh, not yet. Okay, that needs to come forward one. All right, so what I want to do here first actually is... Um, I don't know why I powered this. That doesn't do anything uh, weird. Try to find. So my def system needs has nodes. Um, where are we at here? So this is the def here. So this def um, controller needs to come. Nope, oh, I don't want to copy it. I want to cut it. So if you cut it, that way all the connections stay. So just cut it and move the whole unit. All right, and then this will go on top for now. And so what? DEF is diesel exhaust fluid. It's a urea-based chemical that um, catalyzes diesel uh, exhaust and reduces the pollution. So um, you see it on a lot of modern diesels now. And so uh, what I do is I have I make it so you have to put jet fuel in there, and once it reads zero, it kills the engines. And so that way it gives you a reason to um, have it is if you run out of def, your engine shut off. So um, I think it's, realistically, it's a 50 to 1 ratio. It's for every, um, you know, 50 gallons of diesel you use, you would uh, use one gallon of def. So let's go ahead and cut that. 
And let's go ahead and load in Triton. So this is going to be a functional system. I have, I'm not going to plumb it into the engines right now, but I'm going to put it in there. Uh, part of the, you know what this is, is helpful doing is it gets us to the point where we start um, filling in empty spaces so that, you know, instead of me... Oh, what's going on? I'm, up, I'm upside down here. Um, so I think def is going to go on this front wall actually right here. Um, where is it now? Oh my god, where is it now? There it is. I thought I pulled it way off out of the world and have to do it all again. But I didn't. Okay, good. So def is going to go right here. Um, across from my staircase going up. Um, this is my hatch. I don't know if I want it there actually. Yeah, I might not want it here. Not that this hatch is going to be used for anything, but um, I was going to stick it here. Is the other option maybe there? Let me check it there. See, I kind of want this open because, like, this is supposed to be RP for if you um, need to crane anything in and out of the engine room. You want to have space there, and so I need to have some space. And I want to completely take that area over. This is actually probably fit all right in here. So we have a simulated air compressor. And as long as we have two blocks around, we can walk. And we have our def tank. All right, that's perfect. So that's good there. Um, and so this will pump out um, into the ocean, essentially. So it just dumps the jet fuel into the ocean, which, of course, in real life, we wouldn't want that. But... Um, you know, more decoration stuff. I'm going to put, like, the def accumulation tank. Not, I don't know if that's the right term for it. But um, on top of the engines and plumb it up to the def so that will look a little bit better. But just kind of wanted to get it in. Um, spatially, you know, it's nice to kind of have things spatially. The reason it's this blue color is that's, like, kind of the color of def. Like, the def caps on things are blue like that. So colored it that way. Um, but, yeah, so that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's kind of call it there for screwing around with Triton at the moment. And I kind of just, let me see what the price is on a Triton now. Yeah, it didn't go up much. All right, so that's good. So Triton is saved. Um, yeah, so that's good. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to click it one more time just because I'm paranoid. All right, so Triton is good. Um, let's go ahead and move on to, let's move on to Remora. Now, I just need the tracking system. This shouldn't be too bad, fingers crossed. Famous last words, I know. Um, so let's find... This is the new bearing 2 panel. Um, I don't want that, though. What I want to do is I want to convert it off of... bearing 2 panel. So let me see. So let's uh, start by bringing in... Um, Remora. All right, so Remora is coming in. Uh, let's find a place for an antenna. That should be reasonably easy. It's going to go on the light bar, I think. Yeah, I think we'll go on the light bar. Um, I'm trying to think how I want to do that. You know, I wish they just had like the antenna mast, and you could hook it on top of a pipe because it's like it's square and it's ugly looking. Um, Radio. All right, so there's the radio. Um, I'm going to stick it on here, but I don't know. I think I'll rather... I might just hide it. Um, cause it's gonna. It's not going to necessarily look as, the way I want it to look, so I think I'm just going to hide it. Um, if it wasn't, didn't have a square base, I wouldn't hide it, but um, I think I'm going to hide it because it's going to be annoying to me. All right, so that's in. Um, next thing, so let's go ahead and save Remora. All right, and then what I want to do is I want to bring in the bearing two panel. Bearing two panel here. And so I just need part of this. I mostly need the logic. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to go through this here. Um, 
I don't have a ton of gauge space here, so I'm trying to think how I can kind of cut down a little on what I have here. So I have master power, I have, uh, what do I have? Master power and systems. Master power and systems. Um, and then I have that. I think what, if I can get rid of anything, I'm kind of pressed on space here for getting rid of stuff. Fuel tank I kind of like having, but um, try to think. I could get what I could do here is um, so two is systems. Let's make systems. Uh, Bearing two. Let's make that a dial. Um, I forget what I had to set it to. I'll check that um, off of this panel here. Time to waypoint. Heading hold to bearing. ADF direction to waypoint. 120, 120. Okay. Uh, 120, 120. Okay, so that's going to be 120, 120. Okay, so that's good. Um, and then what I'll do is whatever was two on this, I'm going to change it so the master does all of that. Um, that will simplify it. And so let's see where this panel goes. Yeah. That goes here. Okay, so whatever channel two was from the panel, uh, we'll just make it one. So right here, um, panel, uh, what is going on here? This is, what is this? Oh, okay, that's just a, a move to move it. Okay, so this is systems. Let's make that channel one. So any of those that are, say, channel two, which might have just been that one there. Uh, seat, yeah, uh, that should have been it, I think. So that frees up space pretty quickly and easily. Yeah, um, that wasn't, that was going to all the different places. So yeah, that should have been, that should be it. Okay, so that fixes that. Um, do I have spaces in here? I meant to check it. Uh, hopefully I have some space. Oh, I, I have lots of space. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, good. So that means I can move some crap from here. So I need to figure this out here. Yeah? Rip some stuff apart. So let me go back out. Let me check. Um, uh, it's on this panel. All right, so that is uh, channel two. All right, so we're writing. What's that? Start channel four. Start channel two. So right here. So we need um, need a bunch of stuff here. All right, so I need all my keypads. Just moving stuff around so I can get to it here. Okay, I need all this crap all the way down here. This I don't need, so that can go. All right, so I need that. This here is going to be, um, this is what reads it out. So let me go, so do a property text here. And this is uh, ADF needle. All right, so that's ADF needle right here, and that's going to tell me where that connects to. So I'll put that right there. That's just reading out. That reads out to that channel two. That's correct. Um, bearing two, I can't take that with me anyways, but that's that. Um, okay, so what I think I'm going to do... All right, so let me do this instead. So I, I'm trying to think how to do this. I'm trying to think if I want to be able to navigate. Yeah, I think I do. I want to be able to navigate to any waypoint. So I need to have keypads in there. That's fine. Um, I'm going to leave this on there for now. Let me do property text again. So this will be ADF needle, and this here will be 
bearing two. All right. And so what this is, uh, I'm trying to think how to make this work. Okay, I should be able to do this with a switch. I'm trying to think how to do this. No, that should work. That will work. Okay, yeah, so I don't need that. So that's fine. That will work. Uh, a lot of talking to myself, I know. Um, and then these are all going up there. That's a numerical switch box that I don't need. Okay. That I don't need. That I don't need. Um, that's all panels and nonsense. All right, so this is the guts of the system here. Um, this is all crap I don't need up here. So all that can go. All right, so I'll kind of talk about what this does. So you have keypad X, you have GPS Y. Uh, you have keypad Y, GPS X. So what you, you're going to enter in your keypad. That's the waypoint you want to go to. This is reading where you are presently. All right. And so what you do is you take the, your, um, your, where you want to be, and it subtracts it, uh, it subtracts where you want to be to your current position. Does the same for Y. So now you have essentially the distance, or uh, yeah, the, essentially the the differential between your X and your Y, or your X, your desired X and your current X, your desired Y and your current Y. It gives you the differentials. Then you take the differentials, and you plug it into some trig here as seen, and that um, converts it into bearing two. So that tells you what heading on the compass you would have to go to to arrive at that waypoint. All right. Then what it does is it comes up, uh, floor is just making it so it doesn't have a ton of zeros. Don't need to worry about that. Uh, so this then comes up from there, and it compares it to the compass. And this formula here makes so the needle will always point where you want to go. All right, and so we, what we can do is we just kind of look at the needle. So instead of actually looking at the compass heading and trying to turn the compass heading, the needle will point where we want to go, and all we do is we want the needle straight up and down. So that's how an ADF works in real life. That's how this works. Down here, we don't need all this. This is distance in nautical miles. This is... Um, Estimated time of arrival. I don't need these. I'm not putting these on this simple of a system. So this is a really simple system. So it's much less complex. I want this to be simple because that's the whole point of this system is to be um, simple. All right. And so um, it's going to go in here. And it's going to go right here for now. And then what I need to do is add a bunch of stuff. So I have plenty of space, which is good. All right, so I'm going to need a lot of these nodes. So first what we want to do is we want um, number input, um, keypad X, X. This is going to be a number input, keypad Y. All right, next, again, if you remember what we just talked about, we need to compare that. So we need to compare that to the GPS is X and Y. So this is the where we want to go, and this is going to be where we currently are. So this is number input, um, GPS, X, and that's going to be GPS, Y. That's number input as well. So now we can compare our, where we are, okay? And then um, we have a compass, I believe. Is the compass reading to here? It probably is not. Actually, we don't have a compass sensor, I don't think. So we need a compass sensor. So uh, number input compass sensor. Okay, compass sensor. That reads in there. All right, so the compass sensor comes in. Uh, that's necessary. Okay, so that, do I need anything else? I think I need antenna stuff. Yep, so I'm going to need antenna. So um, I'm trying to think, I might as well just do it on this panel. This does, I can't imagine I need more stuff. I need to. I'll expand it. But this is going to be a um, no. I don't need that. Let me. Let me. Um, what I need here is so I need a number output um, that is. Um,
radio freak radio frequency. I could all I could do this with a Lua panel and it'd be much more compact, but I want this boat to be very simple, kind of old school. So I need a radio frequency that needs to go out. Um, I need to have a composite coming in to read the um, to read the uh, GPS coordinates from Triton. So that is from radio receiver. Okay, radio receiver. All right, now we can go in here. And hopefully I can find the stack of all those cards I just made. Um, I hate it when I put these in if I don't know where they're supposed to appear because it makes it a pain to find them right here. Uh, nope, I thought they were right there. So I need to find that whole stack. So up oh, there they are. So that's actually not a bad position for them all is right there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start working on this. So radio receiver, radio freak. Um... Compass sensor, GPS Y, GPS X, keypad Y, um, keypad X. So I think these are my X's up top, I believe so. And then these are my Y's down below. Um, so I'll go like that. Compass goes up here. Compass, um, I hate it when it slides over one like that. It's just annoying. Like a half a block. Um, then that needs to go there. Okay, good. Uh, next thing, radio frequency. So we, we need to read out the radio frequency. So this I actually don't need. Radio frequency can go bye bye. All right, uh, radio frequency is out. Radio receiver. So right here, what we want to do is um, the keypad is going to allow me to track to any spot. And the reason I put that in is, is I don't have any other navigation system on this. So I figured let's put a simple navigation system on this. So what I want to do is GPS X and GPS Y are going to be the same. So they can kind of just come in close to here. These I'm going to use a switch box. So I need numerical switch box here. So uh, when the system is off, these will essentially read there. I'll go like that. And so what this is going to allow me to do is either cycle be oh I just uh, uh, this is going to be I hit Control X I just keep putting my hand on the wrong keys and it's absolutely driving me nuts. And so what this is going to allow me to do is um, initially it will read whatever I put in the keypad, so it'll read whatever uh, coordinates I put from the map. Um, then when I when I enter uh, I actually do need radio frequency. I'm driving myself nuts here. Um, yeah, input. Okay, uh, radio freak. So what's going to happen is it's down here now. Okay, get out of there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a keypad for the radio frequency. If this is greater than zero, so if I put in an actual channel, uh, it's going to flip these numbers so that it reads the radio. And that way, um, if I put something in there, it's going to say, hey, you know, he wants to track to the radio, you know, switch so that he tracks to the radio. Um, and so now what we're going to do is I need to read the radio receiver, and I believe it's 1 and 2. Um, so we need number 1 and 2. So 1 should be X, 2 should be Y. Okay, and so these will go to there. And so when I put a frequency in um, to read, this is going to is going to sw automatically switch it over and read whatever the radio is is sending out. Uh, floor all that does is make it so that I um, it doesn't have a bunch of decimal places. I do that for if I'm doing a readout. I am not doing a readout, so I don't care. All right, so that's good. Um, so right here, this is the ADF needle. So this needs to go out to my needle. Um, so where's panel? Panel, 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 panel. Uh, right here, is that panel? Panel. Okay, so panel's right here, so that's five. Okay, so right here I can connect up to here. So what I want to do is I want to write a number. And I believe it was two. And so this will allow me to write out that and so that will come off of here 
All right, and that will read out to my panel, and that will make my needle point where I want it to go. All right. So hopefully this is all cooked up. Um, all right, so I think we're in business here. Um, all right, so that's pretty good. I think that sets us up. All right, I hope I didn't lose everybody. All right, so let's go ahead and let's be a little meticulous and do electricity. Oh, jeez. Um, oh, my God, I forgot how to control everything. Work for a week and forget how to do everything. All right, so master power is is this side here. That's battery. That should be battery. Yeah, battery. Okay, so master power is going to go to the antenna right there. That's good. Uh, let's see, we need to have the frequency. And so the frequency is going to go into this panel here. Uh, if I could find the node, where is the node? should be an open node. Did I accidentally make it the wrong way? Frequency, okay, whatever. All right, what the heck, man? Um, oh, it's right here probably, I bet. Um, Oh, so it needs to come from the panel anyway. So let me start working on my panels here. So let's go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do here is make sure symmetry's off. It is cut there. That already has a cut. Um, that's fine. We'll make uh, this will move down. Let me actually look at something really quick here. That's there. Let me put it over there. I'm going to move this here. Actually, that can just go down one. I'm not going to make it too much of a pain here. Okay, then what I want is I want a keypad. So the single keypad is going to be my radio frequency. All right, so that's going to be in there. Let's go ahead and let's go paint. Um green and then on this side I want another keypad this will be typing in my GPS coordinates all right and so this one will get the same treatment that okay there we go all right so that now I have those on there so that's good um, and so next thing I'm going to do is electricity so these are just part of the panel so this one will go uh, to there and this would go to there and that's all set up so that is good um, those are powered now let's hook them up so we need to go uh, a is X and Y is B I always end up having a end up crossing the wires no matter how I set them up GPS Y I need GPS PS not BPS GPS. Again, as you can see, I can't find where I'm putting my hand. So um, I'm trying to decide if I want to make this decorative or not. Put it up in the mast. Nah, it's not that decorative of a piece. You know, if they look kind of reasonable, I'll put them on where you can see them. But if they're not, I just kind of hide them away. All right, so this is a sensor. It doesn't matter. That's going to go to the antenna. I'm not really... Smaller builds, I don't tend to segregate all the systems like I do. So X coordinates is going to be GPS X. And then GPS Y. And I'll go again, as you can see, cross the wires. Um, so that's in there. That's powered. Uh, I'm just double checking everything because I screwed this up yesterday or the other day and did not and had all sorts of problems. All right, so the keypad. Um, Compass sensor. I need a compass sensor. Do I have one? I don't think I have one in here. No, I do. Nope, that's linear speed. Okay, I um, need a compass sensor. All right, compass sensor. It's going to go down in the hull. Uh, sometimes I like to stick them in the nose off. And what is what is this pinky blocks here? I don't know what these are. Let me make sure they're nothing. Okay, those can be deleted. All right, two pinky blocks there can be a dude. Oh, I think I put those in to connect something, and then I didn't need them. Okay, compass. Compass needs two spots, so I'm just going to stick it here. Face it forward. Um, it's all right if it's not center of the ship. It's not a big boat. It's, it's kind of a tiny boat, so um, that can go there. This will go right to the master. 
uh, compass reading will come up here. So compass sensor. I'll, I'll try to get this type of thing up on the workbench, but on the workshop, I just need to kind of clean it up so it's not a pain. All right, and then this panel here, which is my radio frequency, it goes two places. One, it's going to go to the actual antenna here. Um, if I can find it, there we go. Radio frequency goes right there. And then I need to read it on the panel just to be able to right here. Uh, because remember, if that's greater than zero, it's going to stop reading this, and it's going to start reading uh, the antenna. And so that's why I do that. Um, that's the only reason is so that I don't have to put another switch on here. It's kind of an easy way. I do that with I've done that with altitude holds and stuff is you put a, a number greater than zero, it works. All right. Um I kind of I want to test it, but I want to make sure I have everything. So I want to look it over again really quick. So radio frequency greater than zero switches my two numerical switch boxes. Standard is keypad. X and Y, X and uh, where's the Y's? Okay, so keypad X, that's radio receiver Y, those are GPS X and Y, those are going in there, that's giving me my bearing two, it's putting it in, give me an ADF needle. The ADF needle is coming down to the panel, um, it's reading two. Reading channel two, which we'll verify that goes in there, that um, sends it across and through and through all this crapola shmomola and goes up to the panel. I think we are good. Um, what I'm going to do next is very simple backlights for a couple gauges and then we're good. So, right here is uh, systems, which will now be controlled by the master power. So, that's going to turn on uh, those right there. All right, so let's um, go ahead and save Remora. We did a bunch of work there. Let's save it and let's spawn it. All right. What's my mast? I always forget my mast. Uh, it's... All right, so that is, oh, uh, systems. Master power, two. Okay, good. I forgot I have to have power on. All right, so my bearing two, that needle, the number is irrelevant. We don't worry about the number. I worry about where the needle is pointing. All right, so let's start by putting in a waypoint. So let's go ahead and, so we're facing this direction. So let's put one, I don't want to go very far in the test because we're running on time here. But So see it's off, uh, it's not completely to our left, but it's a little left and a hair forward. So the needle should point uh, about there. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and um, I have to step around the mast to get to it. I'm going to put that in. Okay, so that's pointing. Did that change? I can't remember if that changed or not. Uh, we can test it here. So we can see the waypoint. Um, if it lines straight up, that's working. And it looks to be working. So see how the needle points straight up when we're aimed at it? If I start going too far left, see it tells me, hey, go right. And the closer you are, the more uh, variation you're going to get, the further it is. So see how we track right to it? Watch. When I get right on top of it, it will get wiggly right before we hit it, and then it will point right behind us because the waypoint we want is right behind us. So watch as we, we'll get a flip here. And zing. So now it's behind us. So this way... Now this boat works in the fog. We can navigate to any point. We don't know how far away it is. We don't know the time. We can kind of estimate. And so again, this is supposed to be a simple boat. It's not supposed to be uber complicated. I don't want a huge panel on here and a bunch of crap. All right, so see? Now that lets us navigate there. Okay, perfect. Uh, all I need to do too is color that green and we'll be good. All right, so let's put in Triton. And let's go ahead and um, I want to track to Triton. So let's load up Triton. Triton. Spawn Triton. And I'm just going to go run down, um, fly down to the engineering and turn on all the power so we have some, some electricity. All right. And actually, I want to run over here real quick and just look at the new things I put in to make sure they are... Um, Seeming all right and in a good position. And I can move around them. There's our compressor and our def tank. I can still kind of freely move around. 
I like to simulate having access, make sure these open up and don't cause me problems. So there are, are torches and equipment and whatnots. Okay, so that's good. Um, I didn't turn on my master breaker. Master breaker is on now. There we go. All right, um, let me go up to the top. Oh, come on, fly, you dunk. I thought I clicked fly and I did not fly. Okay. And so let's read this. Uh, it's transmitting, which is true. It's transmitting on frequency 6785. Beautiful. All right, now remember the um, remora is going to track to this waypoint unless I put in a number. So if the number in this panel is zero, it tracks to the that keypad. If I put a number in here, which I'm going to put in the frequency, I want 6785. Uh, that should now, oh, that's not pointing right. Okay, so something's up with Remora. Uh, that's fine. Something's up with the switcher. Okay, so I need to figure that out. Um, let's do this. Let's um, go back to Triton. I'm going to move Triton. And then uh, I just don't want to have to spawn Triton in again because I have to do a startup procedure. I'd rather move Triton and then respawn Remora. So something's just not connected on that. So this actually worked better because I can, uh, I'll can i move Triton off like 45 degrees. And then, um, actually, I'll move Triton over to the right here. Um, that way I can, ah, I'll just move it over here. I can put the waypoint somewhere else. I'm overcomplicating it. I just needed to read where Triton is, is all. Okay, so I simply probably forgot to hook something up, so it's not a big deal. All right, so let's look at this. Um, this all can go. All right, um, let's see. So quickly, I, I usually start with electricity when I have a problem. Um, electricity goes there to there to there. That's all plumbed up. That goes to master. That's good. Um, power, power, power. Antenna has power coming directly from the master breaker. Good. The um, GPS plugs into that. Good. Frequency is there. We do not want to transmit, so we'll keep it off. Composite signal, I never connected. Okay. As soon as I thought about it, I realized I didn't cook that. So radio receiver right there. Um, let's go ahead and save that. That should fix it. All right. That, I would say... I bet that is exactly what happened. So, all right. So we're pointing at zero. So it starts with like a, a point up here. I think that's zero. The zero position is up there of the map. It always starts there. So next we have our waypoint. Let's move our waypoint. Let's move it directly. Um, let's move way over here. All right. So uh, okay, we want to go over there to the waypoint. So the needle should be pointing to the back here somewhere. So let's go ahead and put that in. Punch that in. There it is, pointing behind us. Beautiful. Okay, so now I want to go to Triton. Triton is up ahead, so I want to put in the frequency of the antenna, 6785. This lets me also track the other antennas I put in right to Triton. So as you can see, practical application, fog at 100%. I can still see Triton, but um, you kind of get the drift. There we go. Now it's, now it's tough to see. So I can't see Triton. So I start steering to the left. Nope. Needle moves right. Okay, I need to follow the needle. Okay, needles to the right here. Needles to the right. And as you'll see, this will take me right to Triton. All right. Now, often in the air, often flying in airplanes, we actually didn't have distance measuring equipment in some of the simple small airplanes. So you'd actually have to rely on needle sensitivity movement. So like if you're far away, that needle will barely move because the angle to change is very small. So I'll kind of, let me show you real quick, kind of a practical little cool application. So, okay, so let's say you want to go a very far distance. So in this case, let's say the Arctic. So we want to go from here to the Arctic. And let's say we put our waypoint up to the Arctic, right? So... Because the distance is so long, right, think of the needle, right? The needle is tiny. So the difference between right here and right here is a tiny, and, and you bring it back like uh, an arrow, uh, like a triangle. So you bring one line back, 
you bring the other line back, say these are the two points, you bring the other line back, well, up here the distance is a lot, but as you get closer and closer and closer, the tip of the triangle is very um, small. So the needle moves very little when you're a long distance away. Now let's imagine we're very close to something. All right, so we're right here, and we want to go to Triton. Well, now think of the triangle. The triangle is much smaller, and so any tiny little variation really swings wildly. So the closer we get to that, the relative angle we need to go to the target is much larger, and so the needle will swing faster. So if you're far away from a, an object, the needle won't move much as you make uh, minor imperfections in your steering. When you get close to something, that needle moves very quickly. And so that tells us we're, we're either closer or we're far away. So it's kind of a very basic system to kind of, you know, very basic kind of way you can um, figure where you are in relation to your target using that very simple system. So, all right, so we, uh, I probably didn't explain that very well, but uh, so that is in and functioning. That's really good. So. Uh, that really makes Remora much more, what am I saving, Triton? Okay. Uh, that makes Remora much more functional and useful as far as I'm concerned. We had zero navigation system except the basic compass. That was going to be hard to find Triton with. It limited what we could do because if Triton's moving, if, um, you know, if it's a little bit foggy, it pretty much says Remora can't go out. Now, even in that thick pea soup fog, we can go out and remore, still find Triton, we can still navigate to a rescue. Um, if the fog is heavy, we, would, we wouldn't be able to do a rescue, so we couldn't use Triton, So, or we couldn't use remore. This lets us do that, so that was important, I think, to get in. Okay, and so that was a good, uh, I think this has been productive. Uh, a little bit of a build video here, pretty much all build video, of course, but um, I think it was worth it. I think we got much closer to getting our um, our stuff really functional. We now have Remora's can track itself and track back. We have Katie did can track there and back. I'll end up putting in, um, you know, a similar system into the Cormorant. All that needs is an antenna that reads. And as you can see, all I did was a couple numerical switch boxes and that makes that work. So um, we're really getting to a good point where everything navigates. We'll put one in the lifeboat. We'll put essentially this system in. What I'll do is I'll grab this off and I'll package it up real nice and tight on a small microcontroller. And that way I can stick it on the lifeboat too probably. So, um, you know, we really didn't lose any of our... Oh, one thing I need to do before I forget. Additive paint. I need to paint this green so it's not blinding me. Beautiful. All right, so this is done. So that's really good. Um, Remora, I would say, is... N nothing's ever done, let's put it that way. As we find more things um, in career, um, you know, we realize we need to do more stuff. So I'm not ever going to call anything done, probably, but um, it's it's in a much better um, it's in a much better position now. Let's put it that way. Everything functions much better. Everything's working much better for me, and uh, it's much more usable. Before, it wasn't really usable because. You know, we couldn't really use Remora to go do rescues because we couldn't find it. And so now we can. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please uh, give it a like, and I will see you in the next one.